And we're live with a game between Seppi and Donald Bain. This is a live cast of a ranked match happening on Angoville. We're just going to be covering the basics. Nothing too complicated. Start from the Vermont player. MG first is actually pretty common, especially on the south. The issue is holding this middle and this cutoff. Like, this building in particular is pretty hard to hold if you're a Wehrmacht player. But overall, oh, oh, little trip up. This happens to the best of us. Get a little too excited to get going. It builds quick, too, so you're just a little too excited to go. Whereas in the north, we have pretty standard rifleman open. Oh, no, that's a rear echelon. Sorry. That won't look good on the review. But rear echelon start. This is interesting if he decides to go with the rear echelon spam uh that's just the general strategy for people who can't think uh two minutes ahead but either way seppi it looks like he's gonna actually go for the rifleman now he just got the extra rear echelon for the capping advantage uh grand next it's coming out of the infantry company uh, MG Gren start. Uh, usually you see a little more barbed wire to protect the house. It's just a good way to go. Barbed wire around here. This has always been the strat on Angleville ever since Company Heroes won the greatest game ever made. Rear Echelon, just kind of spread capping. Americans have the capping advantage at the start. So, uh, that's just in general how it goes. Oh, that's three Rear Echelon start. First engagement right near the cutoff. I don't think they see that. No, they see it. They see it. They see it. And uh, MG should set up and start firing. If he ba oh, he backed up just enough. Easy capping point there. Uh, it's two grand open, three rear echelon for the riflemen. Americans, I should say. They wander just in range of that MG. MG has vision as long as it's range, so it can easily take on fire on those rear echelon troops. Looks like the fight's going to happen around here. I would call this disadvantage for the Wehrmacht player in the long run, but uh, they have um, impeccable ability to hold points. Rear Echelon coming in to help out, uh, they actually managed to cap the munition point, and the Grenadier managed to decap the fuel. So in general, it's already accomplished what it came here to do. Gren and MG moving up. This is, he doesn't really, the American player doesn't really have the flank here. Rear Echelon. Dude, uh, try to chase the MG away. In general, I felt like the MG could have fought that. But it's fine. Uh, rear echelon getting stuck. Uh, smoking a cigarette near the munitions point. Too much going on in the middle. So this is where the action is. Uh, they can't engage on these grenadiers without uh, attracting the MG. So they'll just leave it. It's idling rear echelons in the west, so we're gonna focus the fight over here. MG does have the range. No, yeah, it does. Just in, just enough range to fire on the Americans in the house. Rear echelon wake up and are engaging on the pioneers in the west. MG42 doesn't really do anything to units and buildings. It's it acts as replacement green cover, so it's not gonna take too much damage in the house. I think the pioneers could have this one. Uh, the rear echelon are engaging in no, in no cover, but they managed to take a model off on these pioneers, and they'll chase them off. Two grenadiers and MG rotting in the house. Not really much for it to do, but grenadiers have the upper hand in this engagement. The rear echelons have to retreat out. Pioneers walking away from the riflemen. So far, no. Upgrades yet from either faction. Uh, waiting on it though. Oh, yep, just started the M20 as the lieutenant hits the field. So this Enemy is the M20 territory. offers a lot of utility, laying uh, anti-vehicle mines, and it has pretty quality anti-infantry with the MG on top. Uh, it does have the problem of uh, getting. Damage engine easily from Panzerfaust from Grenadiers, so it has to play pretty safe. Uh, in general, it's better against OKW because it forces out a Panzer Shrek. But this is fine. This is just fine. This is peachy. Raffman and Rear Echelon outgunned by the Grenadiers in the east. Meanwhile, uh, in the west, 
Uh, Pioneer's grabbing the cutoff. This should cut off the American player from most of its resources. We have been granted access to superior arms and soldiers. M20 has to play pretty safe here versus the Panzerfaust and Grenadiers. But I don't think they can get close enough. Rifleman sitting idle in the west, allowing the Pioneers to decap the Americans from most of their resources. Meanwhile, the Wehrmacht player looking, angling for a Panzerfaust. Uh, forces the M20 to engage at maximum range. But there's not a pack nearby. Oh, he's going to go for the Panzerfaust here. Should give a damaged engine. But he might pay for it with his life. Goes down to two, two models left. This is actually pretty smart. He can hop out and repair it while capping this point. So, that's a pretty solid mo movement coming out from the American player. Uh, could engage with the rifleman. Chooses to just engage with the rear echelon. Yep, and they're going to repair it. Oh, they need to get on point. Quick adjustment there. It should give them that point. Pioneers manage to take the point and retreat out as they are outgunned. Grenadiers posturing to take the left-hand side again, applying more pressure on this cutoff. Repair is now finished and point captured. Uh, Grenadiers, uh, they also are in a position to Panzerfaust this again as it's moving. But I think it'll it'll be fine. Reinforcing squads back at base. Meanwhile, tier 2 just about going up. Just now going up for the Wehrmacht player. This squad could pay for this point with their life. M20 gunning him down. And there's another engagement here with the lieutenant. It's got to retreat out. Can't deal with that firepower. M20 could take this. Yeah, there's nothing, no help coming. It's got the retreat. There's no retreat benefits. M20's just gonna kind of try to slow him down and then try to get him on the retreat. Again, no pack out. And it looks like those Grenadiers tried to chase the rifleman back to base. M20's just got a little sliver of health. It might, oh, no, it's got the smoke. Popping smoke should prevent it. Oh, no, still takes the pencil pass. Now he's got to bring a ton of forces up here to try to save this M20. Engagement on the left. I think the Pioneers have this one. MP40 has the advantage. Scout car. Just trying to limber off. AC now on the field and this rear echelon is going to just get out. This is our counter, the M20. M20 takes another Panzerfaust from the Grenadiers. I think this is just about it. He can pop out and fight the AC here. Because the M20 does have a bazooka on the inside. Oh, he's got it. There's no way he can live through this. He's got to pop out. And pops another smoke. He did have that going for him. Oh, uh, no. Get out. Get out of the vehicle. He's trying to get out. Oh no, he tried to lay a mine there. Way too risky. But I think he'll get a Grenadier for his trouble. M20 for a Grenadier, not quite a fair trade. Nah, that Grenadier is going to get away from that as well. M20 died for basically nothing. Played too aggressive trying to chase the Grenadier squad down. A little too greedy. Panzerfaust are really good. I was actually impressed it went through the smoke and uh, damaged the engine. Cheeky Cap here doesn't actually connect to any of his resource points. So he's got control of, of point way deep in enemy lines. Good for nothing but vision, really. Unlikely to build another M20 to replace his losses. He's probably just going to continue to tech up. Probably get the captain. The captain is a decent counter to an armored car. Another engagement on the left side. Rear echelon have to back out. Armored car, applying pressure. It good, does have a chance to kill and retreat here as there are no units in his base. He's going to think better of it, play it safe. Get the repairs and continue to harass the American player. Oh, there's a rear echelon far behind enemy lines. Going to retreat out. Uh-oh, got the cutoff. This is an LMG... All in the Grenadier squad, giving it increased damage at range. And the cutoff is capped. He's going to try for this engagement here. Rifle grenade misses completely. 
there are those bazookas I was talking about. The good AC counter. Low chance again to kill though. AC gets away with a sliver of health. And here's the assault half track. 250 contains Panzer Grenadiers in, in the in the truck bed. Uh, it's not a truck, but you know what I mean. Now the American player is really in the back foot. He doesn't have any control of the fuel, and the AC even managed to get away. 222, as they call it, but we'll, we'll refer to the AC as it is looks exactly and functionally the same as the one in Company Heroes one. It says 322 on the side, but it's a 222. We'll just have to accept that. So, rear echelon just out of range. Here comes the clone car to clean up these rear echelons, but they can't deal with Panzer Grenadiers. A lot of everything in this area. Rifleman, nearly capping the fuel, gonna get chased off by Grenadiers. All right, trying to take out the Panzer Grenadiers in the house. This is a risky engagement. And the half track on the right, 250, is going to be a similarly assaulting the house in the middle. American player posturing to try to take out this 250. There's not really much he could do about it as it has way too much mobility. He could have popped the rifleman out to try to uh, get a grenade off on it, but I think it's just too quick. Too many troops between him and that. Hard to believe that 222 barely got away. That was pretty critical. He knew that 222 dead, but it's got way too much damage. And in general, I don't think there's anything he can do. There wasn't much he could do there. Rangers squad now on the field. Doctrine chosen. It offers a lot of options. Uh, insofar as dealing with late game. It's got the late game Pershing going for it. All right, Rifleman. Rangers actually do have a pretty good advantage here. Here's a grenade, not really gonna hit anything. Similarly, Rifleman trying to take out these Panzer Grenadiers. I think that was a grenade. No, no, it's just gonna die. Squad down, 250. Does some damage, uh, takes some damage. I think it was a quality trade though, because the Rifleman squad was lost on the left there. Increase your efforts. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Alright, and now he's got a United Front Wehrmacht player. Should be able to deal with this. This captain is looking to die in retreat. Drops both bazookas. Picked up by the American player. Picked one up. But the 250 still not getting repaired. Stug E, assault gun. Available now. Uh, has plenty of manpower for it. Picks up the other bazooka. This is coming up for the Wehrmacht player now. I think he's got this game in hand. Not really a whole lot of options insofar as any tank, any infantry. Stug 3 deployed. Pershing not going to come out in time. 600 manpower and 230 fuel. There's just no way. And he's spent a lot of uh, munitions on teching and the like. This one looks firmly in the hand of the Wehrmacht player. And he could even choose to take this AT gun or just destroy it. Controls the fuel on the left. He was actually taking it with his rear echelons while that havoc was going on, on the right. Less rear echelon, more front echelon, side capping echelon, whatever you want to call them. Infantry blob moving out to try to deal with the infantry. If he gets this, if he gets this Panzer Grenadiers, that could be a big help, a boon, if you will. All right, some machine guns up on the Rangers. They should be able if they get a little closer. They could do a lot to these Panzer Shrek units. Playing it a little too safe though. Bear in mind these are close range weapons. They wipe everything out. I think he's gonna let these guys get away, which is real unfortunate. He really needed them dead. Another AT gun out on the field now. Should help to deal with this Stuggy. All right, a tank gun lands. Stuggy a little bit in the, of a pickle. AT gun fails to take a second shot. Rear echelon with a bazooka can at least try to scare off this armored car. 222. 
Sugi having nothing to do with that EAT gun and this armored car having nothing to do with these rear echelons with the bazooka. Still, the American player does control the left side of the map. This is going to be critical resources for later. Alright, Stuggy. He does manage to scout out this AT gun in kind of a bad spot. AT gun has been uh, kind of a little too far back to deal with it. And there are too many shot blockers on this left side of the map. Does actually take out a model on that Grenadier spot. That was pretty critical. Alright. Rangers go ahead and slugging it out in the open versus MP40s on the Pioneers. Grenadiers should be able to chase off this single squad of rear echelon troops. AC move back in. Still damaged. Takes another shot of the bazooka. I don't think it can take another. But it does force a retreat out of these. And they go down to the Stuggy. Long shot. Snipes him on retreat. So far, it looks like the American player is down uh, two rifle squads uh, and a captain. I believe that captain died. Whereas the Vermont player has lost a grand total of nothing. Lost the squad. Managed to keep all his units alive thus far in the game. Just managed to kind of build up his forces and uh, push the American player off the right side of the map. I did call that uh, it has it's a little harder to play right side. Very much. But he's done pretty well. Impeccably well, actually. I think he's going to win. He's got the VP lead. Only, only three VPs lost for the Vermont player compared to the now 300 of the American player. House does have a chance to go down pretty quickly to the Stug. Not wise to stay in that house for much longer than you need, really need to be. House is losing hit points fast. Meanwhile, on the right side, Rangers. Huge damage on these Grenadiers, but doesn't chase them down. She's instead to start capping. The Stug has to retreat. AT gun chases it off. Uh, AT gun just out of range of this armored car. Has to move a little more forward. Meanwhile, engagement on the right. Grenadier is getting chased off by these rangers. Uh, the Vermeer player is a little too split up on this left side to mount any resistance to these rangers. Rangers offer a ton of damage. 210 fuel for the American player. About 20 fuel short. It should line up pretty well with when he needs that Pershing. As long as he doesn't stand to lose too many units. Don't want to lose too much to manpower. He does have to buy something pretty hefty later. M26 Pershing, it does not cost a small amount of manpower. Meanwhile, the Baramount player sitting on 800 manpower doesn't need to spend anything. Sitting on a lot of resources, detected just about anything he wants. Uh, chooses not to. I think he's waiting instead to save for the tiger. Two more command points necessary to get that on the field. Alright, looks like the American player is going to have the victory point advantage again. Uh, two to one over the Vermont player, but he does not have access to his fuel anymore. Taken by the clowns in the car. 250 backing up. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. So it looks like the Vermont player tries to nail down the American player on either side of the map. Does so effectively, but can't really completely wipe him out. American player doing his best to stay in this game as he is on a huge deficiency in points. We are losing a sector. In general, not looking too good. AT gun. In a position to try to fire on this Stug if it gets any closer. Alright, Vermont player grouping up to try to deal with this threat of riflemen and rear echelon troops. Meanwhile, capping on the right side of the map looks like he'll retake that victory point lead. Stug does walk into a rifleman with a bazooka, but will wisely back off. Engagement on the left side, Rangers 
Don't take a whole lot of damage, but can dish it out. Take it and give it. We'll chase off these two squads of Grenadiers. Very heroic. Very heroic. AT gun in a position. We'll do quality damage to this tug. Vermont player, a solid Enemy victory point, plus change away from that tiger he needs to really close the door on this this game. Trying to engage as much as possible as the American player on the right side. He really needs that Pershing. Similar teching options, but it definitely looks like the Vermont player has the advantage. Just in terms of victory points alone. AC. Chase off Lieutenant Four can get that victory point. He really needs the victory points to stay in the game at this point. And I don't think he's going to be allowed that. Coming down to the 100 red zone warning for the American player. Looking grim. American player chooses to pull out of the territory he owns to try to take territory he doesn't. Hardly a very mobile army, but I mean, this is still, you know, he does need victory points to even stand this, and this is the closest victory point he has. Now he's up to 12 victory points. Vermont player a little closer to that critical 13 points he needs for the Tiger. I think he's just short on fuel. Not teching anymore. He is absolutely just saving up for this Tiger. He does have the fuel he needs. Uh, American player has had the fuel for his Pershing for a while, just locked out on uh, command points at the time. Another push on the cutoff. American player doesn't really have the options to deal with this. The AT gun is clear over on the right side in an attempt to deal with an armored car if, if it were to push in. He's gonna have to trudge all the way back. Engagement on the cutoff. Choose to focus down the Grenadiers capping the point. Stuggy takes, does a lot of damage to Rifleman in cover. They're going to retreat out, don't want to deal with it. AT gun now in a position to fire on the Stug. First shot goes wide. They do succeed in capping, but now the AC is free to engage on the right side. And we'll chase off these rear echelons. Infantry is enough to deal with the American player. M26 Pershing rolls out on the field just at the same time as the Tiger does for the Vermont player. Rear echelon in a bad position here. They're going to have to retreat out. But Tiger just in time to start dealing out the damage of the Pershing. It remands the AT gun. The AT gun in an attempt to try to outgun this Tiger. Tiger front armor too strong. It's going to go for the kill. This is a risky play. Goes ahead and drops the light artillery barrage on the AT gun and the infantry, the Rangers here. I think the Tiger does have it. Wipes the AT gun out. Tiger going to make a hasty retreat now. AT gun remanned by the Rangers. Takes, gets taken out immediately by the Tiger. Tiger has no counter on the field at this time other than a few bazookas inside the American player. Pershing was too critical here to be played so aggressively, so it looks like